which is so extremely like high octane monster energy like it's there like yeah as far as i'm concerned just like midwest gas stations fueled stepping stone both literally and figuratively <laughs> I don't know if you saw that it like I heard it up. you heard it for sure um I'm always nervous because the last time I tried to open up any kind of drink on on a, a podcast like it froze up on me so I'm always like having PTSD with it now but <laughs> awesome well thanks everyone for tuning in uh another great episode of the scoped exposure podcast uh we're about to get real silly with uh my homie Nathan thanks for coming on the pod Dude, of course. Thank you for having me. So, you know, I'm sure a lot of people who have clicked on the podcast, either audio or visual, um, obviously know who you are, but it would, I I don't want to butcher the intro. So how about you do a proper introduction of the bands you're a part of and how you're known in uh, Western Canada? Got you. Uh, my name's Nathan, aka Brain Freeze. Don't you forget it. Uh, play guitar in Stepping Stone, vocals in Flashback. Um, I think that's it currently. Uh, been in a number of bands that have lasted for like a very short period of time, but yeah, been around for a minute. <laughs> yeah, and uh, I'm I'm super excited to talk about those bands specifically and what's coming um, around the the band for both of those. Uh, as far as when this episode is being released, um, the Stepping Stone, uh, I guess, pre-orders for Escape the Junkyard are just yesterday so you know wanting to plan this out and we can talk about the album and talk about things that are going on with flashback um but obviously i like to get a little bit of context about all the guests that come on the show how they got into hardcore how they got into you know playing in bands so can you kind of tell me some of the origin moments for mr brain freeze and you know what were those uh formative years especially being from regina dude yeah absolutely um so I grew up on a very like mainstream, much alternative, much music vibe, Mm -hmm. like a sevenfold, um, a Treyu kind of stuff, which is still very sick. Don't get me wrong. Still back those bands pretty hard. Yeah. Um, And like, I thought those were like the hardest of hardcores at the time. And I like, I knocked hardcore music and, you know, hardcore dancing and like the ninja spin kicks like i knocked that shit so hard and then i started playing in a band with luke and brett who also play in stepping stone now and a couple other friends and we were just like a goofy metal band and we just like evolved and brett had always been very much involved in hardcore music and he wanted to push it into a more hardcore direction and like I didn't really realize at the time that that's what was happening, but you know, I was like 14, 15, just going along with it. And then we got to a point where we were pretty much a hardcore band, more or less, maybe like verging between like metalcore, hardcore. And um, a friend of mine at the time was like, dude, you don't, you don't like hardcore. Like, what are you doing? And I was like, Oh, okay. Like, like, this is a hardcore man. Um, They showed me, uh, uh trapped under ice i don't remember what song but i was like instantly like holy shit like i love this right it was probably like pleased to meet you or something and right. like <laughs> that intro probably just got me um and i i guess the rest is just classic hardcore origin story from there on but yeah yeah just kind of like stumbled upon it yeah that um, that's a big thing as far as realizing that, you know, uh, hardcore kids nowadays don't just come from like, you know, listening to just punk music or things like that. There is, I, sh- I should mention, I was also, um, I was also like very like punk is punk, like minor threat, bad brains were like my favorite bands. Like I had like five black flag shirts at the time. And like, I did claim to be straight edge cause I knew minor threat and like 
thought it was sick. I do still claim to be straight edge because minor threat is still sick. Um, but yeah, just like hard, you know, hardcore. I just wasn't about the tough guy thing. And I mean, even now I question if I'm still about the tough guy thing, but you know, I'm here. Yeah. And I, I remember vividly driving uh, back from Calgary when we road tripped to, I, I picked you up from Winnipeg to Regina and then we went to Calgary for the mortality rate uh, LP yes. release. And then I remember coming back and then we were bopping some Avenged Sevenfold and me and you were just having the time of our lives and everyone else in the back was like, what is this garbage? And the Rev's death hit me like a ton of bricks, Dude, man. I remember exactly where I was. I was on vacation with my family in Florida, read that like news article and like, like my sister, ironically it's the same day as my sister's birthday and Damn. it's just like why are you ruining my birthday i'm like you don't understand <laughs> dude he invented that like insane like double bass drum ride cymbal fill it's like like that's so sick yeah yeah and then like i don't know like i was a big fan watching all their like uh in the studio docs so to see him like just maniacally laughing in the studio they picked on Johnny Christ so bad. I think about that all the time. Why? Why were they in a band like that? Like, they weren't even big at the time, and they they picked on this kid relentlessly. And I'm just yeah. like, yeah, what? I mean, it worked out for him, but yeah, yeah. That, those are possibly going on in my head still. <laughs> and yeah, it, yeah, I'll never forget that one take where uh, uh, Sinister Gates is just like hitting the. <laughs> Dude, so sick. Yeah, um, maybe one be a famous musician very badly look at it's like i want to i want to be up there with sin just back to back shredding guitar yeah but yeah, like you know <laughs> I, i'm sure some people have already turned off this podcast because we're talking so much about event sevenfold <laughs> but you know like going back to their origins as well like they were you know okay we're like a you know metal metalcore hardcore band you know like some of their earlier stuff and now it's like you know it's it's pretty mainstream like metal music or rock music but yeah. you know like there there are so many bands that start in those very diy um starter years and the fact that you could actually see it and see the the progression over the years is, is pretty cool like event sevenfold like when they were a smaller band, like playing Chain Reaction and shit, like they were with it, I think. Like they knew who Madball was. Yeah. You know? For sure. So, like, I don't know. There's always like some weird connection between that kind of music. I always think it's funny when like bigger bands even just acknowledge the presence of hardcore because it's supposed to be like this huge underground thing. And it's like, oh, here's Post Malone playing a Biohazard song on acoustic <laughs> guitar. And then yeah. Brian Cox playing American Nightmare, which is so funny. Yeah. I love how we've had already a five minute uh, tangent on Event Sevenfold. Um, but uh, yeah, so like, yeah, the best. Um, so, you know, I, I, I kind of, you know, relate to you in the, the fact of listening to more maybe like metalcore, um, much music, metal, metal, if you will. Uh, and then, you know, because I remember some of the first uh, hardcore records that I listened to. I'm like, why does this why is this record so badly? Like, I don't understand, but like understanding the vibe now, it's like second nature to me. Um, yeah. I, think I had an issue with the recording quality. Cause like when you listen to old bad brands and shit, it's like, uh. so <laughs> yeah. I, I was cool with that. I was, it was, it was honestly just like the, it was like the tough guy macho vibe that I just wasn't about. Yeah. And now, I mean, I'd, I'd be lying to myself if I haven't, you know, if I wouldn't admit to crowd killing at some point in my life, which is, Pain, but you know right um you know i i remember i sent you uh a, a clip of a set where you got on stage and just like grabbed the mic and full on just slap someone in the face <laughs> that's mean man that's, that's mean so, that's, that's um yeah but anyways kind of going back so um so you you had a band with Luke, who's the vocalist of Stepping Stone. That was yep. one of your first bands. Um, what was kind of the the origins of Stepping Stone? Because you know, even though you guys have really like evolved as far as like musically and different things, you guys have always had like a consistent like vibe um, as far as being like maybe a you know a a Canadians hardcore band in a in a way. Um, so you know, whenever I talk to bands, I always ask like oh, did you have that discussion like prior to starting the band? But like probably the real answer is just a natural progression of just like, you know, doing your own thing and not 
trying to do a style of another band, so to speak? Yeah, I think it was a hint of both. Like, I think we built a very loose foundation of what we wanted to be. And I think just of all the events and stuff that have happened to us really formed us who we were. Like we started, we wanted to be called Cage Rage and we wanted to be a hardcore band. So like the, the Canadian roots were definitely there. Right. I don't think we were ever like, we're going to be Canada's band though. Like, I think it just, I think we just put on for Canada a lot. Just unintentionally. I mean, Americans do it for America. Like, you see like usa straight edge and all that shit like i feel like everyone just puts on for their home in some way yeah but um i think like yeah we didn't really have a goal of being like we're gonna be that like that junkyard fucking nascar bullshit band i was thinking about that earlier today actually and i think like being from canada and not seeing like not really understanding the U S and like going to the Midwest so frequently. And like, it's like a culture shock of like, this is, this place is so it's like off the walls, like American, you know, it's just so, it's just so extremely like high octane monster energy. Like it's there. Like, yeah. As far as I'm concerned, just like Midwest gas stations, Fueled stepping stone, both literally and figuratively. <laughs> <laughs> I love that analogy. Dude, that's good. Yeah. Um, yeah. So as far and you know, there, there's something there because you know I, I've said this on other podcasts as well. Just on you know, there there have been a couple of bands at least in Western Canada who have you know dipped deep into like um, touring full time and you know have taken breaks and things like that, but as far as when you guys started, it's always been like, you know, heavily infiltrating the U S and like, you know, really showcasing Canada and, you know, you guys not only put like, in my opinion, put like Regina on the map as far as like, you know, scenes and bands are concerned, but also, you know, you were kind of the representative when you're going to fests like LDB or, you know, flyover fest or anything like that. So, um, you know, one question I had was like, uh, what what's like maybe one of the funniest uh assumptions about canada as a whole that you've heard when you're playing in the states dude it's like it's what you'd think like there are people that straight up think it's a frozen tundra like of cavemen and yetis yeah like infiltrating small yukon villages all over the place (laughs) it's it's honestly insane that there are there's a lot of people that are with it in the U S like obviously geography is not some sort of hidden art form. Like anyone can really figure it out, but it's just surprising that there are so many people that just don't get it. And like, I still get messages in, on the band account, like from promoters or whatever in like Detroit being like, yo, can you guys come down and play this weekend? Like we had a band drop and we're like, man, like, Toronto is not Canada. We are so goddamn far away from you. Please, like, you yeah. stop. Same promoter has messaged me multiple times, and they're just like, oh, I forgot, man. I forgot. Yeah, sorry, dude. Um, All Canada is, it's like a state or, like, its own province, you know? But it's, it's a fucking country. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like, I, I've had the same message. Like, can you just roll down with cold shoulder? And I'm like, like, dude, and- <laughs> cold shoulder. Like, no. no. <laughs> We're rolling over to <laughs> Yeah, we're we're getting we're frozen up a little bit, but I think I think we're back. Um, yeah, so yeah, and and that's the thing overall, at least that I've tried to communicate through stuff with Scoped is just like Western Canada doesn't get the love that it deserves because people will just dip up into Toronto and then dip right back down and if you're on the the west coast it's like oh maybe we can do vancouver but you know there's three huge provinces with arguably like good scenes and great cities to tour through um but you know a lot of people just opt for like well like numbers wise it doesn't make sense which is i think fair Mm -hmm. in some way um a lot of bands are obviously worried about financial 
shit, which is completely fair and valid, that it it doesn't make sense for them to drive, you know, eight hours between all these cities. But what I've noticed is like you 100% will make your money through merch because nobody is coming through. And when somebody does come through, like everyone is buying merch. Doesn't even, doesn't matter how big your band is. Like you could be, you could be like a melodic hardcore band playing a power violent show and people are going to be like, yeah, I love this. I love this band. I'm buying their shit. Yeah. Yeah. That's actually a super good point. Cause I know when, um, shout out to plead, they did like a Alberta BC run and they hit up a lot of like really niche kind of towns. And they said that they made more money on merch at those shows versus like the Vancouver's and Kelowna's and yeah, whatnot. Definitely. I mean, if you, you don't, when you don't get something, like when you finally get it, you're, you go overboard. Mm-hmm. Like we got this, are their first vegan restaurant, shout out Good Eats. And like it opened maybe a week and a half ago. Yeah. We have ordered it three times since 60, $70 bill every time. Yeah. So like when a hardcore band comes through, when hardcore bands never come through, like people are, people are cashing them out. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I think, like you said, a fair point of like, you know, it's, you are rolling the dice, but I think, um, uh, considering supply and demand for certain cities is like a huge thing for sure. Definitely. Like I mentioned this in another podcast I did probably a year ago. I was like, man, Jesus peace came through like two years ago and there's still kids talking about that show. And honestly, as far as like attendance and shit went, it was just another show. Right. But even a year later now, same thing. People are still talking about that show. Mm-hmm. Cause it's just one of the few things that we had. Yeah. Um, you know, mentioning just shows in, in your area, um, you know, and you mentioned this before, as far as like being a representative for Canada, but I think maybe, um, what started at first was like really trying to represent Saskatchewan and like, you know, um, and, and I think, and I was thinking about this before we were on the call. Cause, um, uh, when I moved to Calgary, there's such a beef between Calgary and Edmonton largely just due to sports you grow up and you're like no you have to hate this city because it's this team and at least growing up in winnipeg it was no different being like nope you cheer for the bombers you don't cheer for the rough riders so i remember when we first met there was like and and i guess there's always like a, a bit of like friendly you know rivalry or things like that but i the thing that i saw with you guys is that you were like we're gonna ride hard for um saskatchewan overall Um, yeah so you know was that again just like something that was just like we're all proud to be here so we're gonna put that into our music or it's like you know we're gonna strategically do some shout outs in some of our songs i think it was like we grew up in a scene that was like very much punk and it was queen city punk at the time Mm. and a lot of those people they were in that like we definitely followed in their footsteps as far as like playing in bands and then going on to like get into schooling or something like these people that we looked up to we just like we admired them so much and like there were so few of them in like our small city so i think we just really tried to you know like follow in their footsteps to some extent and then coined like queen city hardcore which i'm i'm sure we're not the first people to say queen city hardcore but like we were just like that's sick like we can you know all those bands in the u.s man like new york hardcore like california hardcore it just has like the sickest ring to it right so doing hardcore not so much you know <laughs> hardcore, not right. so much the only like i hear like vancouver hardcore and like boom like i know like what's up there even i hear winnipeg because like those doofuses fucking like they're just like, yeah. Yeah. but i just i don't know i never heard regina hardcore and was like oh fuck yeah right. so i think we wanted to be that yeah add, add some spice on on the name and give it a little bit more flavor for sure yeah exactly and like we've played in like random u.s cities um and like had people yell queen city hardcore at us and i'm just like man that is fucking sick. Yeah. Like I, love that. yeah. Um, as far as like the, you know, like something else that I was thinking about too, because you know, and I don't think that a, a scene strength necessarily is in the numbers. I think that there are 
things to look at when it comes to like how active things are, how much people are like investing in things. And so, you know, Regina as a whole is like uh, a little bit smaller as far as maybe, you know, Vancouver or Calgary or things like that. And how have you kind of like balanced the, um, cause I see like you're kind of the go-to person as far as like putting on shows there. And, you know, obviously you have your hands in a lot of different bands and, and things like that. So how have you, I guess, like battled trying to keep things in that scene going, keep shows going while still playing in different bands. And, you know, because it becomes tough when it's like, Oh, like I want to take on this, you know, tour that's coming through, but like, I know stepping stone is going to be on tour that on that time. Um, how have you kind of like handled those kind of situations? Man, it's, it's tough. And I don't think I can say confidently that I have handled those situations. Like I've attempted and I think I failed a lot of the time. Um, Cause if stepping stone is on tour, that means flashback is unavailable. That means frozen's unavailable. Accelerators like this, like the classic, like, right. you lose one drummer, you lose 20 bands. Right. Like, so it's really tough, but Regina has also always had a very diverse, like, genre blending atmosphere done in like a really sick way like it's not like some like painstaking pop punk hardcore show it's like oh this punk band is playing with this like synth pop band and then this hardcore band Mm -hmm. and like pop rock band and it just works i think it just works because it's regina honestly Mm -hmm. like there's this dude humongous shout out to lova lamp lava lamp with an o okay he plays in flashback but he wrote this like 1975 ass pop banger album cute for the summer as it's it's the best non-hardcore release to come out of saskatchewan as far as i'm concerned but like on like that's just you've had a lot of records where i've just been like holy shit like this is so sick and like there's just no issue putting that on the same bill as a hardcore show. Yeah. So if, if Stepping Stone is away and all those bands that I mentioned can't play, lots of the time someone will step up, put the show on, and just have like a mixed bill thing going on. But a lot of the time, there's just no one to put the show on. Yeah. A lot of people are like scared to put the shows on. I mean, it's like you do lose money a lot of the time as a promoter, especially in Regina. Mm. So. I don't know, man. I wish I had like a confident answer because it would make my life a lot easier. To hit, no, and it would seem stronger. I think. No, I think I think it's fair. You know, like you're you're sharing those realities as far as like the the size of the scene currently. Like you know, someone could be listening to this podcast in twenty years and be like, Regina is dominating as far as oh, Canadian man. is concerned. Like, not ten years. I don't know. Whenever you know, have you heard of the band Means? No, oh, of course. Yeah. Like Regina has been on the map. You know. 100%, and then yeah fell off the map mm-hmm. and i was like on the map right now in like a smaller sense than they were with means because like that means final show i heard that like hundreds and hundreds of people right which is sick um stepping stones had shows that did like extremely well maybe not like as much as means but like when i started going to shows versus like now it's definitely way stronger than it than it was previously yeah yeah like i i recorded a podcast like two days ago and we were talking about means and uh I feel like the more that I say it in the podcast, the more likely they might do a reunion show. And so I'm just like, means, 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 means. <laughs> like, Yeah, I, honestly, man, I I don't know any of those dudes in that band. I don't know. But like the thought has crossed my mind about trying to make it happen for sure. Oh, we, yeah. Every year we have like a bench. Um, it's off by like, the like punk bands that I mentioned way earlier called um, Harvest King Records. They had like a small record label yeah. and they did this Christmas show. And um, again, like this cool mix bill show, but it's always been a benefit show. And last year, or the year before I took it over and I renamed it the Harvest Prince because I still wanted to have, you know, that inf- affiliation. We're just yeah. like the yeah. end to it. Um, and we did a benefit for Mike Brown, who I think you do know. Mm-hmm. Um, and we did it for him and his daughter. And so like, the the turnout to that was like spectacular because it was for somebody local and so this year i'm like man like if there's somebody local that needs cash like that like if mike needed cash again i'd be like man like there are so many people that like love and admire mike brown like 
I'm going to pull this. I'm going to make this a fucking reunion thing. Like I can get a van to do this for Mike, you know, yeah. like Regina, again, Regina will put on for their scene. Bands that used to be a band, bands that are a band, I know, like, people will put, still put on for their homies here. Yeah. And if Means is, anyone in Means is listening, like, whether it's in Regina, in Winnipeg, in Calgary, if it's all three cities, like, there, me being included, like, there will be people that will drive from far, far away to see that, because I think that's a, that's a reunion set that's warranted. Um, but to go off of that show that you were mentioning, the, the, Prince Prince Harvest, I, is that right? Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, you know, means it now, but I really just wanted to keep that affiliation. Yeah, no, no. I I think it's a it's a fitting name, and it's been cool. Um, you know, unfortunately, I haven't been able to to come out for that um, weird time of year as far as like Christmas and, and whatnot. Um, but, Traveling, yeah. Gary. And so, um, you know, I I still have recruited shout out to Wyatt and uh, Brett as far as like filming that, letting me edit it and put it on the channel. Um, you know, and, and there's been some. In- that's my bad. Oh, that's uh, okay. Let's try to figure that one out. Jumping back into it, um, you've had like like you said a, a mixed bill for for that benefit show and a plethora of different bands. Um, do you want to talk about? Um, hooking up with the Miami Tony X Montana boys and you know you know that that's a pretty big thing to bring a band from my from Miami all the way to Regina to play one show Dude, it's huge and like Tony Montana are like so big like they won't even play shows locally in Miami right and the fact that they're willing to come out to Regina and play that Christmas show every year truly speaks levels to the strength of our scene mm-hmm. I think people should take note about that yeah can you can you uh, describe what they sound like for anyone who maybe hasn't heard of that band? Absolutely, Tony Montana is Miami hardcore. Uh, they exist to spread the message about the movie Scarface. Um, that's really it, man. Like they that's just it. <laughs> rock it yeah, Scarface. yeah. It's it's uh you know I I would love for them to come play like a scope anniversary and one year but they they've they've kept it pretty exclusive to your to your scene which is pretty pretty cool for them yeah i don't know why i don't know why they chose regina um i know we had scarface play at one of our local movie theaters at one point so that might be because nowhere else has ever done something like that so they just really so shout out to tony montana there's two sets on the scope channel if you're like what the fuck is that and uh can go check that out it's a lot of fun it really is yeah um to transition to a band that you're actually in and involved with um so as the time of like when this podcast is going to drop um the the newest stepping stone release is just on the horizon um escape from the junkyard or escape the junkyard escape from the junkyard we had because i did that promo video and i was like is is there a typo here but it's escape (laughs) from the junkyard um so you know i i would say that's what your fourth release uh, we did demo, test a character, test, uh, Unreal Form. Yeah, this will be the fourth. Yeah. I don't know if that's like, so- that's not sophomore, but, you know, fourth release um, yeah. coming out on Safe Inside Records. And uh, talk to me about the uh, recording process because you guys did it all in Regina with Chris. And, you know, what was the, uh, what can people expect as far as what's coming up on that in the next uh Couple, probably a few weeks here yeah i think escape from the junkyard is definitely a lot of bands say this all the time and whenever i see it i'm like oh my god like scott vogel has said this about the next terror record <laughs> and I'm like, man like no escape from the junkyard is truly like what stepping stone was meant to do mm. like it's just everything we've done has built up to this i'm really proud of it um, it is it just it's an EP. It's six songs, and you know every single song I think is just the perfect stepping stone vibe. And I'm really proud of just how cohesive we were able to make it, as far as you know the vibe of the band, just vibes, bro. Yeah. But um, yeah, I feel like it's just we finally came into our own, and we finally are comfortable doing this thing. Um, you'd think i would be prepared for a question like this no that's Um, fine 
but uh yeah i'm just i'm really proud of this whole I don't want to say culture, but you know, just it, I keep stepping but, stone for sure has a culture. I think it, that's fair to say. Stepping stoners, bro. <laughs> um, yeah, no, it's just I. We just worked and honestly, unintentionally created this again vibe of junkyard slamming, and I think that's exactly what this is, and I'm really proud of it. Yeah, I I will say like that was probably the most fun in the edit as far as things were concerned with that promo piece. Cause you know, we were messaging back and forth. You're like, so WrestleMania um, <laughs> cra car crashes, like anything. And I was like, big okay, dunks. big dunks for sure. Big dunks. Yes. Just um, like stepping stone is a band for the people. Yes. And the people have a very short attention span. So we just want that hard hitting fast paced, dummy shit yeah but on some real shit like i mentioned this on a, a past podcast like and it wasn't even like something i had thought about it was just like kind of in the in the moment like um slip slip to the crypt which is on uh unreal form i guess the album before this upcoming one um just like vocally and lyrically that to me was like almost like an anthem as far as like western canada is concerned damn it's huge well Luke like would very proud to hear that i'm sure <laughs> yeah and and you know like luke's you know plugged in a lot of like heartfelt juices into his lyrics it's not just talking about like there is that level of just slamming and you know being a you know a metal mutant to a degree yeah. but there's also just like stuff you know personal development or just like things like that which i think together makes the perfect like peanut butter jelly sandwich in a way yeah, dude, Uncrustables for sure. I think he's really, he really takes a lot of time to, like, he writes a lot about, I think, like, self-reflection and being the best version of yourself. And I think like, Luke's one of the most genuine people I know. And I think when he's writing those lyrics, I think they are, they're extremely genuine, like, no bullshit. Yeah. He's not afraid to examine himself in that aspect and, you know, translate it into lyrics. Yeah. And I think as far as do you have a uh one question i had was do you have a favorite stepping stone moment whether captured on film or not in the entire existence of the band man the favorite moments are definitely just random van bullshit or like gas station stops um but there are also some like stage moments that stand out when i think of it um Nikki throwing the fucking bills into the crowd, making it rain. The fibers. Yeah. Anytime you chug a Red Bull and punt it into the crowd, that always resonates pretty strongly in my mind. Oh, I don't think I've... I'd I've be actually, very hard to I don't think I've actually seen that live. So that must be a tour. Maybe move. it's a new move I've brought in. Um, <laughs> you know, really working on my fucking skill set repertoire. You know, I busted out at Wild Rose this year, but didn't get to. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's a, you know, all the all the the flat of ribbles that you had for Wild Rose, and you're like, all <laughs> these are gonna be into the crowd. <laughs> yeah, man, it's tough. To, it's tough to pinpoint a moment. Everybody asks that question, and I, I really wish I documented our tours better mm. too after that. And I, every time we leave for a tour, I'm like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make a journal of like what happens, all the funny stuff that happens. But like, looking back, it's just like stupid. Like, what are the odds games? And like, just goofing around with your boys. Right. Is there any? What are the odds that off the top of your head? Um, one of my favorites was getting naked in Kelowna and jumping into a public fountain. <laughs> Uh, another one was when we were touring with Low End and Dare in California. I think that was it. Getting slapped with the greasiest piece of cheese pizza in the face. Um, definitely lost some vegan points for that one. Mm. Uh, nothing else that I want to make public record, quite honestly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What what happens on the uh, on the tour stays on the tour, I guess. Um, yeah. I I guess. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So, um, so yeah, very excited about that, that record. Um, 
uh, as far as like when this is uh, released, like, do you guys have like a set date that you're kind of aiming for? Because do yeah, pre-orders are going to be on the 11th, which would be yesterday. Is that what we're doing? Yeah, yeah that's what we're doing. <laughs> yesterday, uh, yeah, check out. I think it's uh, Safe Inside's um, distro through Death Wish. They're going to be available, which is really sick to just see my band on Death Wish's website because yeah. Regina has always been like a Death Wish city. Like people here are either wearing were either when i was coming up we were like always wearing converged sweaters and that kind of shit so it's just like damn this is a very cool feeling but yeah it'll be on a uh, the death wish distro and i think the street date is the 25th okay. i want to say so it'll be on spotify and stuff uh i'm sure shipments are going to take a bit longer because of this covid action but hopefully sooner than later yeah and you know it's it it goes without saying that like right now is a a great time to support the bands that that you fuck with whether that's you know just streaming the album time and time again or doing pre-orders or you know shouting out like anything goes a long way so yeah i mean like it's not like we're we've ever been a band that's like oh man like if we lose if we lose our revenue stream from stepping stone like we're ruined like right no like we just can't buy red bulls for a little bit like (laughs) It's okay. Um, we'll just wait till they're on sale again. Um, right now, with people being at home, like it's, I think it's the perfect time to put out a record. Like yeah. people have time to listen to it. I personally have been listening to more music right now than I ever have before. Yeah. Just when I'm doing art stuff or whatever, keeping it on in the background. Um, so yeah, just stream the record if you can. If you have the cash, buy it. Buy it. I'm really happy with the vinyl colors. Um, first 12 inch that i've ever put out and they just they look super sick yeah yeah and uh it's escape from the junkyard on one side and then it's unreal form on the other gotcha yeah both sides, both sides have the full artwork which is something i'm tremendously proud of that's very i think sick. You know, for the two are just so badass yeah shout out to mad keith helsinki the artist that did escape from the junkyard yeah um I remember when we were going back and forth about the video and I was like, I need that file, Nathan. And you're like, okay, you don't understand the scarcity of how valuable this thing is. And then I saw it like, what in the fuck is this? But- I was going to have to finish the promo with a blindfold on, but I realized it's probably won't work. <laughs> like FaceTime me and I'm like, like trying to figure out where the cut and replace keys are. Yeah. But, um, you know, what's, uh, what's been the biggest uh or you know obviously that caught a a ton of eyes as far as being like you know i wouldn't say an innovative thing but just something that was like so perfect for you guys yeah i think it really embodies the stepping stone yeah culture culture yeah (laughs) um so yeah very excited for that record support that support uh safe inside all that good stuff um so i'm not i'm not sure if it'll still be up come this podcast but Safe Inside also put out a compilation of, I think, 19 hardcore bands yes. from all across North America. Um, they're matching donations for COVID-19 um, emergency response benefits. They raised like $700 last time, and they're matching that, which is so sick. Yeah. And it will be up still for uh, download on Bandcap. Just pay what you can. A lot of really sick bands on there. Yeah. There's some cats in there too rejection pack did a go with a loan cover which is super sick mm-hmm. yeah some cold shoulder on there as well you know uh safe inside is a, a record that um there's been talks of doing more scoped safe inside collaboration so you know shout out to them you know support that label it's run by some really rad dudes and yeah. uh putting on some really independent and bands that need to be more well known um yeah. speaking of bands that need to be more well known um the other band that you uh, are a part of is a band called Flashback. And, uh, you know, I, I, I want to talk about the origins and, you know, what's coming up. But as far as I remember when you put out that demo, first off, it was out of now out of nowhere, which I was like, whoa, like this is so sick. And, um, you know, it was definitely a, a way different vibe as far as like, you know, it was like, OK, like there's some hardcore influence, but it's largely like alternative new metal in a sense um yeah dude if you thought there was a little bit of hard uh hardcore influence on sound asleep you there is <laughs> there's maybe point one the fucking 
there's like 0.1 percentage of hardcore influence on the next release yeah they've really transformed into like a radio friendly nhl hits soundtrack band and i'm i could not be more excited about it yeah um, so yeah we started with like a very like leeway prong kind of influence and then i think like after we played some shows with that we were like yeah this is sick but like how sick would it be if we busted out this riff and then it's just like man like that riff follows by this and you know and then we're just like and then we're all wearing fucking baggy cargo pants and chain wallets and here we are we are like yeah we've become a radio friendly new metal band right pretty much so, and i'm loving it <laughs> and at least at the beginning like i remember when you posted it, you were saying like you know this that project has been one of the most um biggest pushes out of your comfort zone and first off i was like well i didn't know but like nathan had a comfort zone to begin with <laughs> uh but b you know like you know hearing you sing on a, a record was like really cool and, and refreshing in a way so can you talk to me about like was was it originally your idea and then you approached some other guys or it was like maybe you started on another instrument and you were like no i'm actually gonna do vocals like full bore yeah i was initially gonna play bass oh okay and then found myself on vocals and I wanted to do like a yelly, like not screaming, but like still aggressive kind of style of vocals. Yeah. And that didn't really happen. Uh, once we got into the studio, it just, just kind of took off there. And now like this next release, we're going to put out two songs, just a little, quick little promo to like show you the direction that we're really headed for. We're doing it on homie shit records, which is based out of Toronto. Okay. Um, and yeah, I re they're like the perfect combination of tracks to show the direction that we're headed. Mm. Um, but as far as like pushing me out of my comfort zone, like the lyrics on Sound of Sleep were like very personal. Mm. Um, and I'm always, whenever I see vocalists like posting or their record and being like, oh, my blood, sweat and tears went into this. I'm always like, oh, like, come on, man. Like you're right. Like you're writing a record. It's fun. It's a blast. But like. I do get it now a bit more. Like I definitely have some, a lot more emotion poured into this one. Yeah. It's super fun. But like the lyrical content, like on these next two is like very much like self-reflection and just trying to be okay with everything going on in the world right now. Yeah. Um, and it is going to be okay, but it's tough sometimes and it's tough to remind yourself. And flashback is like, that reminder of peace and love mm, yeah um and obviously like it's it's a great way to kind of like um partner up stepping stone and flashback for certain tours or you know festivals or things like that um did you has that always been the game plan as far as like you know like asking the other guys like hey is it cool if flashback jumps on this as well or you know what's what's the process there logistically I don't think it was ever like intended to be that way. I think it's just like, oh, I'm spending two months touring with Stepping Stone this year. When do I get to tour with Flashback? Mm. Like, and when's that action gonna be? Um, and so I just, well, the only way for this to work logistically is to just combine the two of them, right. which we were right. gonna do in May um, before COVID hit. Yeah. And yeah. we were going to do like California tour, stepping so in flashback. And like we share three members and like we're all best friends outside of it. And I think it, it, it will be perfect when it happens because it will happen. Yeah. <laughs> it's just a matter of when. Yeah. But yeah, I never intended to use stepping stone as a stepping stone for flashback, but. <laughs> logistically it's just that's just the way the garden grows yeah and, and you know sometimes it's just like you know clearly if you're shooting that out to a promoter you're like yeah this is cool like and then it's just like oh let's just add two more people to the to the van and you know bob's your uncle dude exactly man bob's yeah. your uncle yeah but it's like you know, there's bands in like florida or whatever i'm not sure how active they are but i know there's like this one dude that plays in like three or four hardcore bands that were like super hot. And so they were all playing like one fest because they were like, yeah, you can fly a band A, pay another $600 to get the other two members out. Then you have two other bands. Right. You know? So I guess it does, it makes sense that yeah. way. I think Flashback still needs to make a name for ourselves. 
and uh, with the new release, I am a little worried about hardcore promoters not biting on wanting flashback on their hardcore bills. But looking back, like when new metal was like coming up, like those bands all played with hardcore bands. Mm-hmm. And yeah. history repeats, whether you like it or not, new metal is back, baby. <laughs> Yeah, and like arguably a lot of those hardcore bands are doing like or are either huge Slubknot fans, A, or they're just, you know, doing an offshoot like corn cover or like intro cover or yeah. something. Um yeah. that was actually a question I had as far as like intro covers are concerned, because uh Stepping Stone has done a fair share of uh, We've done a fair share and we've butchered a whole lot of them. Yeah. <laughs> and what's what's Boys been Boys are back in town best track best intro dude could not have been more of a trainer i absolutely <laughs> enjoyed it but holy shit i loved it yeah i i do remember that show in winnipeg vividly it was like oh everyone but ross hit the the down <laughs> yeah i remember messaging you being like hey man like let's figure this one out as far as posting this video goes. yeah let's let's just like cut in there <laughs> and i think it actually worked pretty well you know luckily with um with the multicam you can do that um do you have a favorite one that uh that you've covered over the years as far as successful and we did uh, we did the rough rider anthem at one point oh um, okay saskatchewan rough riders we booked it pretty hard i'm trying to think of ones that we didn't oh animals by nickelback we killed that one yeah yeah that one that one's a personal favorite of mine uh, especially for that uh for that fest um it, it's been cool to see people actually like come out of nickel the nickelback closet in a way and actually like showcase a another hard-working canadian man kowalski was losing his mind during that cover which was very funny yeah i think he jumps up on stage with like an entire like hoodie and he's like flinging it around yeah. or something yeah real big move yeah. just trying to steal the spotlight yeah um <laughs> as far as like um you know like stepping stone is obviously a band uh that you know scoped has covered time and time again um you know probably probably one of the top two maybe three like most documented bands of all time um and i'm kind of curious on like you know not like you have to give me a resounding review or anything but i'm just kind of curious uh what your honest take is like you know um because i remember the very first show that you guys came out to winnipeg and uh played um at the rocker and you know the last time i saw you was at snow and flurry and just like to see that like you know climb for you guys has been like really inspiring so i'm just kind of curious on the the receiving end of that like has it helped has it not helped you know i'm i'm really glad that you mentioned that first show and this last show that you saw Because when we first went to Winnipeg, it was, I was the worst I had ever been as far as emotional health went or mental health went. Um, I was in like the most terrible headspace and just really going through it. And um, I remember very vividly how upset I was and how beaten down I was. Mm -hmm. And then when we played Snow and Flurry, last time you saw us, I have probably, I was probably in the best place I had ever been. Hmm. which is really sick. Um, yeah, just funny that you mentioned that. But as far as um, if it's helped, I think it's helped exponentially. Um, there's people from all over the place watching those scope videos, which is like, good on you, man. Like It really speaks to like, good on you and your team, rather. Yeah. Uh, you had a very strong crew. But I think it speaks to like the level of community that hardcore has which no other genre really has. And I think you guys putting on like that really helps. I've had people straight up say, I watched your set on scoped exposure. Mm -hmm. And that like, that is up there for like Queen City hardcore. As far as like, it's really cool to hear, you know, someone in Boston or whatever mentioned like something so close to home. So it's definitely helped. Um, being the like second most documented band, I'm like, holy, like, do we need this many sets up there? But like, fuck them. <laughs> yeah, it is. It is like something that I always try to like think. You know, what are the bands 
that are you know most documented for us and for other people so like you know for sunny for hate five six obviously jesus piece is like well yeah. well up there and yeah. uh but you know arguably you know jesus piece is doing very very well all those videos yeah. do very very well so yeah i think i think it's always interesting you know uh i i obviously understand the uh like I'm always trying to put myself in the band's shoes as far as being tagged multiple, multiple, multiple times, and you know I think we've talked before about like, well maybe like Scope can come for like a stepping stone run, but you know I've I've seen it now where Sunny will do that with Knock Loose, and then it's like you're getting bombarded with eleven Knock Loose sets all within a, a yeah, week's time. It's not, like, it's not like we're fucking Rush changing up the set list every night, right? Yeah. <laughs> we're coming out with like a what the fuck is up two-step riff fight riff we're done you know it's the same shit yeah. i think catching it, i think catching it on different tours is more important and more sincere yeah more more of the move but you know like uh, a big reason why i love stepping stone is like being from winnipeg you know very similar to being like an underdog kind of town and um you know the fact that you guys have really you know made made your scene appear on the on the radar but also take that out to the world and kind of be the 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 messenger in a sense you know to to kind of really fly the canada flag i think it's i think it's huge so you know and obviously like you guys you know that involves a lot as far as time and you know things and obviously you guys are having fun but you know you know there's i'm sure there's been a plethora of like certain shows where you're like man what are we doing but like you know always remember that you're kind of the uh the poster child is uh is good yeah, yeah it's, that's definitely something that's in the back of your mind i think for a lot of hardcore bands even largely successful ones is like what are we doing and it i think it always just comes down to passion mm, yeah which is so sick i don't know if other genres can relate in that same way which is very cool yeah um, but yeah sometimes you know playing playing someone's kitchen in Atlanta, Georgia to like 30 people. It's, it's, it's very cool in its own way. But when you go and you pack it into the van after, after making a hundred bucks, you're kind of like, is this worth it? Right. Yeah. And then the next day you wake up and you're like, Oh, I'm in Atlanta, Georgia. I'm from Regina, Saskatchewan. This is insane. This is 100%. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, we're kind of jumping back um, to topics, but uh, we were talking about covers, and one question I had written down is: Is there a particular song you want to cover, either with Stepping Stone or Flashback, that you want to, but you know that either it might not pop off like you want it to, or you'll catch some flack for doing that song? Dude, I don't think covers never pop off like you want them to. Like, like very, very rarely. Sure. It, like. I've seen bands cover like Inside Out probably a dozen times and like every time like, two or three people are up front singing the words. I'm like, man, we're really still doing this. <laughs> but uh, I would love to cover like, I think I would love to cover a System of a Down song with Flashback. That would be rad. But, but then I'm like, oh, like a lot of people that fuck with System of a Down, like, they're going to laugh that we're doing it for a few seconds and then be over it. <laughs> like, right. I think people like covers that much, quite honestly. Like I freak out when I hear like some very specific songs being covered and that's it. And then when, an, when another band, when a band covers, covers a cover that I don't know, I'm like, I'm like very uncomfortable and I'm like, I should know that. You know, yeah. like, like if a band covers a mad ball song I don't know, I'm like, man, I don't know this mad ball song. I'm in trouble. Right. <laughs> I'm losing I'm losing hardcore points here. Yeah, looking over your shoulder. You're like, wait, why aren't you moshing? You're like, oh sorry. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Covers are covers are weird. Covers in theory are supposed to be such a blast. Covers in reality are like texting the band beforehand being like yo what song are you covering i'm fucking getting the words down <laughs> like dude when i was 16 like straight up i admit i have definitely done that right yeah and I, just, I think it's funny yeah I, I i in my personal opinion i think the intro cover is the 
the, that's the way to go that's the way to go because it's you know you're only doing like the first hard riff of the song before the singing comes in yeah. or whatever it is um, the biggest intro cover that i have heard is uh when mortality rate covered uh like redneck stomp or whatever that song is oh right yeah they're doing that so sick yeah yeah that was the hardest yeah there's there's been a couple i've i've actually thought about like cutting together a compilation of like best intro covers um i think that's a good swing low did like enter sandman the first time they came to calgary um yeah and i don't like that sounds so sick if a band is like we're covering enter sandman it's like hell yeah and then they do it and you're the only one losing your mind yeah. And like, what the- <laughs> yeah yeah so um shout out to anyone who's trying to figure out a cover for you know when they're going back to playing um well nathan we should start kind of wrapping up the show here but um you know is there anything that you want to kind of send people off as far as you know things that are coming up with stepping stone things that are coming up with flashback just an overall positive hardcore message if you want to you know spit some fire now's your time to do that i think i've talked about stepping stone and flashback as far as what we're doing and as far as what we can realistically plan right now yeah i don't know when we can tour again so i don't have anything as far as that goes but uh the flashback release is going to be very cool as far as like promotional items go so keep your eyes open for that um Shout out to Trench. They're absolutely killing it lately. Like Revolver Magazine. That's insane. Yeah. So sad. Yeah. Um, yeah, obviously, shout out to Canadian Hardcore, as always. Um, there's a lot of bands in the U.S. right now that I think are really killing it that aren't getting the attention that they deserve, which is kind of how it's always going to go. But like Gadget from Minneapolis, Straight Edge Band, very, very sick. Yep. They're doing like, the cool, like triple b vibe but not on triple b and they're killing it um i just say triple b vibe because he seems to nap up all those bands that do that (laughs) that's obviously the thing he likes the most but like gadget is a very sick band um yeah i hope everyone is doing all right in quarantine right now um hope everyone's mental health is doing okay i apologize to my homies that i haven't checked on i know i should but everyone's going through it you know yeah love it's all you got yeah and uh you know to to quote that because you brought up gadget you know spreading the love whether it's through podcasts yeah, like this or yeah spread the love all day yeah um you know the one section that i i want to ask you as far as uh you know reoccurring uh segments on this show is just a favorite mosh story and then we can kind of do our plugs and get on out of here Favorite mosh story. Favorite mosh story would not involve me moshing in any capacity because I'm terrible at moshing. Still the sickest thing ever. Uh, I think beat the fuck out of Ravi mosh call is the best. I do remember that, yeah. That doesn't know who Ravi is. Picture Minkus from Boy Meets World mixed with beans from Even Stevens. <laughs> Ravi. There was a mosh call that was beat the fuck out of Ravi. He didn't really get beat, but it was pretty funny. Yeah. Yeah, and the fact that it was on film. I, I also like the uh <laughs> the um the year you guys played the Calgary Fest where in Winnipeg knocked out your teeth and then Luke said, I want everyone to look like fucking Nathan. Yes, that was gold man. I lost yeah, I lost three teeth the night before we left for a tour. What the fuck, man? That shit sucked. But yeah, definitely turned negative into a positive with that god tier mosh call. <laughs> Yeah, nothing was more contextual like ever again. So, yeah. um, cool. Well, Nathan, how can people follow up with the your bands and you on social? Can you just kind of say them so I can put them on the screen here? Yeah, definitely. Um, I think it's at Stepping Stone HC for Stepping Stone. Um, at Stepping Stone HC for Twitter. Flashback is Flashback New on Instagram. Probably the same on Twitter. And that's N U, not N E W. It's N U, N U, yeah. Yeah. Man, not to be confused with the Flashback band from Calgary. There's a Stoner Rock band, Flashback from Calgary. We got our sights on them. Yeah. You're like, we'll we'll take you out at the next Calgary Wild Rose. <laughs> oh, I'm not saying what you're saying. All right, been watching a lot of The Sopranos. Yeah. <laughs> Sweet. I'm, well, 
Uh, Nathan, thanks. thanks for coming on the show. It's uh, always a pleasure to chat with you and uh, excited for all the new music that you're up to right now. Dude, hell yeah. Take it easy, man.